Everyone's favorite waifu event is coming up soon, and what's a waifu event without a new waifu? Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for the newest member of the Kaldia Mami Club, Murasaki Shikibu. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers to how to utilize her effectively, and an overall grade, comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you guys are ready to take a closer look at Murasaki's assets, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell, so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and also help out the channel. Now, on to Murasaki's stats. Murasaki has a max HP of 12,833 and a max attack of 11,374, which becomes 10,236 due to her caster class modifier. For a 5 star caster, she has a very low HP stat, ranking at the bottom of her class. However, to make up for that, she has the second highest attack stat among casters. Compared to the other 5 star servants overall, her HP remains well below average, while her attack also rates lower than the average 5 star. When it comes to her command cards, Murasaki has a whopping 4 hits on her quick card, 4 hits on her arts, 4 hits on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.45% and a star rate of 10.7%. Overall, Murasaki is a much more offensively minded caster than average, with most of her stats being allocated towards her attack, while both her star generating and NP gain are quite good thanks to the high hit counts across all of her cards. Taking a look at her skills, Murasaki's first skill is Song of the Poet Rank A. This reduces all enemies' defense for 3 turns, between 20 and 30%, and it also increases the party's damage against demonic enemies for 3 turns, between 20 and 30%, both depending on level. Her second skill is Witchcraft Lyric Rank D+. This skill has between a 60 and 80% chance of NP sealing an enemy for 1 turn. It also charges Murasaki's NP gauge between 20 and 30%, and increases her NP damage between 10 to 20% for 3 turns, all depending on level. And finally, her last skill is Diary of Murasaki Shikibu Rank B. This skill grants the party a damage cut between 500 and 1000 depending on level for 3 attacks or 3 turns. It also grants the party debuff immunity for 1 time, lasting for 3 turns, and increases the party's buff removal resistance by 100% for 1 time, lasting 3 turns. For her passives, Murasaki has Territory Creation Rank C+, which increases her own arch card effectiveness by 7%, and Item Construction Rank C, which increases her debuff success rate by 6%. As for her deck and Noble Phantasm, Murasaki has an Arts Quick deck with Quick Quick Arts Arts Buster and an Arts Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Genji Monogatari Aoi Mononoke. This is an AoE attack that deals damage to all enemies with between a 450 and 750% damage modifier depending on level. It also inflicts buff block on all enemies for one turn, and deals additional damage to demonic enemies with between a 150 and 200% damage modifier depending on overcharge. When it comes to her ascension material requirements, Murasaki is unique in that she requires a brand new ascension mat that debuts with the Valentine's event. For level ascension, she requires 8 forbidden pages, 6 grease, 9 lanugos, and 5 scarabs. Pages are best farmed at Shinjuku 2 Chome in Shinjuku, where they have a 30% drop rate. Grease can be farmed at the Northern Cliffs in Agartha with a 20% drop rate. Lanugos have an 18% drop rate at Village 67 in Lost Belt 2. And Scarabs can be farmed at the Great Temple in Camelot with a 12% drop rate. For skill ascension, Murasaki needs 9 Grease, 15 Pages, 24 Soundless Bells, and 10 mirrors per skill. Soundless Bells have a 39% drop rate at the Bomb and Cave in Lost Belt 3, and the mirrors are a new ascension material that can be purchased at the event shop, or they can be farmed at the Trembling in Fear stage in Shimosa, where they have a 12% drop rate. Murasaki may seem like just another addition to the long line of AoE arch casters that we already have in FGO, and she is, but she also has quite a few other interesting things going for her that really set her apart. For example, her stats are much more offensively focused than other casters, as she has considerably more attack than even Ilya and Caster Nero, although she also has very low HP to compensate for that. Furthermore, she also possesses some of the best natural NP gain and star generating in her class. So while her stats may seem low and kind of awkward on paper, 
for the most part they work very well with her playstyle. A playstyle that focuses on being hyper offensive and proactive. Her first skill, Song of the Poet, decreases all enemies defenses by 30%, and it increases the party's damage against demonic enemies by another 30%. Naturally, this skill is phenomenal against demonic enemies since it can provide the party with an effective 60% damage buff against all enemies, which is insane from just one skill. And demonic enemies aren't that uncommon, as they often appear as mini bosses on some farming stages and as raid bosses during some events. Also, it's worth noting that Hydras are demonic, so Murasaki earns the official Fuck Hydra's seal of approval. But even without the anti-demonic buff, this skill is still a situationally better charisma that can increase the party's damage by 30%. Just keep in mind that as a debuff, it can miss, unlike charisma. Murasaki has another big damage tool in her second skill, Witchcraft. This skill provides her a 30% NP charge, as well as a 20% buff to NP damage for 3 turns, and it also packs an NP seal. Murasaki's NP gain is already quite strong, so this skill just pushes her over the edge and allows her to NP spam and even NP loop more consistently. The fact that the NP damage buff lasts for 3 turns is also big, because that means that Murasaki doesn't have to worry about her damage dropping off that much with subsequent NPs. Finally, the NP seal, while situational, is a tremendous piece of utility that can come in clutch for tough fights. Unfortunately though, the NP seal only has an 80% chance of landing, so it can miss pretty often. Murasaki's final skill, Diary of Murasaki Shikibu, is a defensive skill that grants the party a 1000 HP damage cut for 3 hits. It also grants them a one-time debuff immunity and an increase to buff removal resistance. This skill has a lot of niche effects that can work really well with some teams. The damage cut, for example, is great in stall teams with servants like Mosh or Waver since it works well with defensive buffs. Party-wide debuff immunity is good for some boss fights as well as for negating demerits that some allies may have on their skills, like for example Ilya's NP. And buff removal resistance is nice for some servants who can remove their own buffs like Consort U. When it comes to skill level priority, go for the NP charge first because it's important for farming, followed by her first skill for better damage, and then Diary last because it's a bit more niche. Murasaki's NP is an AoE arch attack that deals additional damage to demonic enemies and inflicts buff block on all enemies. The extra damage to demonic enemies is nice because it fits well with her first skill, but the buff block shouldn't be overlooked either because it could come in handy for some high difficulty fights by preventing bosses from buffing themselves. And thanks to Murasaki's excellent NP gain and NP charge, she has no issues with spamming this NP out, which makes her one of the best servants in the game when it comes to dealing with demonic enemies. More importantly, it also makes her great for arts farming teams where she can NP loop easily for fast, efficient farming. Aside from being a really strong farmer and having her niche as an anti-demonic servant, Murasaki can also provide some niche support in some tougher content, thanks to her plethora of debuffs. She can NP seal and buff block bosses, which is a powerful combination, and she can even buff the entire team's damage and provide light protection with her buffs. On the downside though, Murasaki does struggle with outputting damage. While she can NP consistently enough, her NP damage is among some of the weakest in her class. This in turn can make farming harder events difficult unless you're able to provide her with plenty of buffs. Murasaki is also overly reliant on debuffs to provide utility. As I mentioned earlier, her defense down and NP seal can miss, and many late game bosses usually have some form of debuff immunity or debuff removal, which effectively counters Murasaki's support skills. As is the case with most arts farmers, Murasaki depends a lot on her team to maintain her buffs and her consistency. That means that you want to pair Murasaki with art servants who can significantly buff her low damage and also provide her with an NP battery. Servants like Paracelsus, Helena, or Nero Bride. Helena provides Murasaki with direct NP charge and a good arch buff to help out her damage. Similarly, Paracelsus and Bride can give Murasaki significant buffs to NP gain and damage, especially after Nero's upcoming interlude. Other than NP batteries, Murasaki works well with defensive servants who can benefit from her stall tactics or who can improve her debuff capabilities like Mosh, Landling, and Caster Gill. Murasaki's defense buff can work very well when paired with both Mosh and Lan Ling, 
abilities, and both of them can offer her additional damage and NP charge as well. Caster Gill has the rare ability to increase the party's debuff success rate, which allows Murasaki to land her debuffs much more often. Murasaki's Bondcraft Essence is Shingenji Monogatari Emaki. It increases the party's damage against demonic enemies by 20%. A pretty good craft essence if you're specifically facing demonic enemies in a raid or boss fight, but most of the time it's best to use craft essences that give Murasaki starting NP charge and that buff her arts or NP gain like Painting Summer, Magical Girl of Sapphire, Dive to Blue, or Kaleidoscope, all of which will greatly help her with farming. You can also give Murasaki some more support based CEs if she's not being used for farming, like 2030, Seaside Luxury, Record Holder, and His Rightful Place. In the future, you can also use Annual General Meeting if you want to perform more of a supportive role, because that craft essence increases arch card effectiveness, NP gain, and generates stars. For command codes, Mages of Flowers can be useful for keeping her NP charge up since it grants 10% NP charge when attacking. Overall, Murasaki is a strong arch farmer with a good mix of utility and situational buffs. Without a doubt, her strongest asset is her superb NP gain and her NP charge, which allow her to NP spam effortlessly in many arts comps. But she's also a strong anti-demonic servant who is capable of dishing out good damage against demonic enemies as well as buffing the team's damage. And even in boss fights, she has a good range of options for stalling out enemies. However, she does suffer from some poor damage both on her face cards and a especially on her Noble Phantasm, and her utility is a bit too dependent on her debuffs which can miss very easily, especially in some late game fights. So all in all, Murasaki gets a B plus from me. Really the biggest thing holding her back is a general lack of damage which hopefully will get fixed with an NP interlude. But outside of that she is one of the most consistent farmers around and she can be incredibly useful in some niche situations. And those are my thoughts on Murasaki. I do think it's worth rolling for her if you don't already have a good AoE arts farmer like Anastasia or Da Vinci, or if you just like big titty milfs. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So, Brony out. Later.